Welcome to Shadows of Dawn. Hello, welcome to Shadows of Dawn. Uh, this is our Session 3 DM build for Group B. So Group B is actually going to be playing before Group A when it comes in March. Uh, so I'm going to be setting up for their next episode. Uh, just like the other ones, you can watch me set up. I'll talk through it. We'll see how this goes. So uh, Session 3, uh, they have chosen to go to Sarenshire to help them with their life root growth problem as they're starting to see this sickness build in the land. This sounds like an opportunity that the Druids Guild had offered them. Uh, so this is going to be kind of a different build. I'm not going to be using a whole lot of uh, dungeon stuff. It'll be uh, very different. Uh, so let's just kind of take a look at where they're going. Uh, so if we go to our map, uh, let's see, Group B is... Uh, way down here in the southern plateaus. So they are going to probably end up escorting uh, the professor back over here to Glissendell. And then they will either trek or I highly suspect they may get some magical help uh, in order to come up here to Sarenshire, which is a village up here. Uh, it was a village. It was a village turned into a town uh, that's here on the very edge of the Great Woods. So. It's going to be wooded, and this adventure is not going to take place mostly in the town. It'll take place outside of the town, so we're going to do some forest setups. So let's just jump in here and see how this goes, all right? I'll go over to the table, and we'll get building. So I'll go ahead, and I've started with uh, laying out some terrain here. And I guess what's important to know at first is I kind of get this this set up here is I have two types of terrain and the reason I do is because when whenever they travel I always roll random encounters so the world has random encounters things can happen and as it so happens they are going to have an encounter in the crags before they actually make it to the road right so they'll have to kind of defend uh, the little caravan they're with uh, as some bandits are going to attack so we're gonna start building in the crags and so what I did is I took some of these mats mats by Mars which are really awesome. Uh, and I went ahead and split it. And since this battle isn't going to be very big, uh, you know, I just have a, a slim area over here of where they'll be traveling in the crags and we'll set up some stuff around it and get that ambush going. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, so the first part of the ambush is they're gonna have, first thing you always wanna set up is a couple of wagons. So we have wagons and I found these wagons on eBay. Uh, you had to kind of glue them together, but the best part about these wagons is little minis can actually fit into the wagons. And that's, believe it or not, that's actually super hard to find uh, when it comes to D&D terrain. Not sure why that is the case. You would think that wagons would be something that would be very common because people would travel, but no. Turns out, not the case. Uh, so I'm also going to get... I also found these horses, which are great, because you can use just some sticky tack on the side and put a mini on the side so that it's like they're riding a horse. And horse comes on a large disc, large base. So I don't expect anybody to actually be riding these horses um, since they're kind of in a wagon train. Uh, these are just like the, uh, what they call them, draft horses. So they're draft horses. And we're gonna go ahead and add a few just uh, worker people to the wagon train 
these are the people that are coming back with them to the town, kind of the people that they will have to protect. So I'm just picking up some little NPC minis, just a bunch of little NPC minis and we're going to place them in the wagon, various places. So, uh, let's get driver, we have our professor who's kind of vital to the story. Another little driver. And have somebody walking next to the horse. And maybe up here, somebody walking next to the cart. And the party will be able to basically place themselves wherever they want. Um, but let's let's make this a little more crag-like. So for crags, I know a lot of people get lost in the absolutely has to look like. Uh, you know, desert or sand terrain. I don't get too lost in that. Um, but what I do like to do is I like to break up the elevations. So I have some, just some elevation terrain. And even I'm just gonna put it here at the edge of the table too, because I don't really want them running off the edge of the table in any way, shape or form. So I'm just gonna kind of break up some elevation here. Uh, I have smaller elevation terrain that I can use as well. And I'm going to dive into that right now. And these are basically the same thing. Uh, they're just very small. They're small pieces. So, if you look, just kind of smaller elevation pieces. I'm just going to kind of spread them out. I don't really want them going off of that direction. So, we'll put one here as if they had to kind of curve around. And we're kind of making a natural little bottleneck here. Kind of doing that on purpose because that's obviously where our ambush is going to be. And let's go ahead and get another piece of elevation terrain. And I got a big piece here. Let's see how this works out. You can see on the small camera, this is a really big piece. Um, but the reason I'm going to use it is because I'm just going to kind of put it here at the end of the table. I don't want it you know, and I'll use it to kind of help maybe break up this end over here. You can kind of see what I'm doing there on the end. I'm just going to use this to make this, make this little area through here so that they have to kind of move through there. So nothing crazy. We'll go ahead and push this onto the table. Let's turn it a bit. And let's put the big thing up there. Let's do that. We'll kind of wall this off a little bit. Uh, maybe we can elevate this. There we go. Let's elevate that. Just kind of elevate that side there. And that way our little wagon train has to kind of move diagonal through the crags, if you will. And then behind over here, I'm just going to use that little elevation here. And just, I'm kind of walling this off so that they don't get the idea that they can just run through that direction. So, yeah. Nice little bottleneck. And then I have some trees that purposefully, I never put foliage on them. I left them bare. And, uh, it was for stuff like this, either dead woods or crags. So these trees were just just naked, which worked really good for crags. So I'm gonna take one, we're just gonna put one way back here just because. And we'll put another one here. And uh, another one way over here, kind of kind of in the front. So yeah, looking at that, I'm holding the camera up here. So that's that, right? And then we have, uh, they're gonna be ambushed by some bandits. And I have them in front of the ambush site so that if they make their perception checks, uh, they'll see the ambush before they're in the middle of it. If not, then I will move them forward and have them smack dab in the middle of the ambush. <laughs> Mwah -ha -ha. Um, so that's it. That's actually really fast to set up, right? 
Uh, the next part is kind of once they've gotten to the little town, uh, Sarenshire, then they're engaged, and then they'll have to kind of go out in the forest uh, in order to solve this problem. So I automatically know right now I'm going to need a lot of trees. I'm going to need a lot of green. And fortunately, I have saved up quite a bit. And these are some really cool trees. I found these on Etsy. And uh, for the life of me, I can't remember who makes them, but they even make them with little rocks. And they just make you a scatter. I'm going to say maybe, might be like 10 in a pack or something. And they're actually really affordable. Um, and so I bought a couple of packs because if I really want to do a forest, you know, I need, got to have lots of trees. So right now I'm just going to, I'm bringing out my trees. I'm bringing, bringing out lots of trees. So just bear with me as I pull all of these out. And then I have some of the trees like I had before that uh, didn't have foliage. And then now they do. Uh, like these. Right? So these are trees. Kind of come in a uh, like a hobby kit, and you can put I'm not sure what you want to call it foliage or the green stuff. So I think some of them even call it lichen. Um, you put the lichen on it. All right, so I'm just throwing them all out here for now, just trying to see what I have. Um, and then I have some really small, just a few small ones, like like these little bitty guys. And, Found these also in another little hobby kit. Just small plants. I'm gonna take up a little five foot space. So tons of trees. So just to start with, let's, let's just go ahead and start you know, spreading these out really good. Now I feel really feel like a Bob Ross here. Happy little trees. And we're definitely gonna need some area on this. So and if I can tilt that up just a little bit to give you a better idea. Love these mats. Mats by Mars. Mars, if you're watching. Uh, great. I like how the terrain on the mat isn't just flat. It's, uh, you know, kind of merged and mixed. Uh, with kind of like the drier areas. Kind of like our grass down here in Texas at the moment. And from the... Uh, <laughs> Never fully recovered from the, uh, I'm gonna say that the hard freezes that we had, and or the actually the uh, drought, and then uh, then we had the freezes, made it all so much better. <laughs> Not really. So lots of these. All right. So I do have some more terrain, and I am gonna add it. But now it's really kind of time to plan plan my encounters. Uh, so in this place, it's not just one large forest. So I'm really gonna have to kind of quadrant this off into sections right um, because they'll go to one section some things will happen they'll go to, then they'll travel a little and go to another section so you it's not just one swath of land that they can see everything and move through um, I'm really breaking this up into separate encounters uh, so the first encounter that they have is the actual life root grove itself so I want to make a little grove um, and I guess to me, a little grove is kind of hidden, if you will. So I have some of these terrain, which I also got on Etsy. It's just kind of like aquarium foliage on some flat pieces, um, which I always kind of call impassable terrain. So like this terrain is, you can't get through it. It's, you know, basically impassable. So I'm gonna start way over here. I'm gonna use a corner. It's not a big encounter. Um, but it is a starting encounter and I kind of want to make it so that they can come into this little grove like area and perhaps they come in this direction uh, that, you know maybe come in from here and if they are let's go ahead and put a tree back over here so it's kind of against these rocks makes it a little, a little greener and uh, part of this encounter is as they're checking out the life root grove, which I want some, I want some little plants. 
here. So I actually have these little bitty tiny plants in the dungeon terrain that I want to use here. Just some of these really little, little tiny guys. So can't move a bit over here. So I want to use like these as part of, you know, perhaps part of the grove. It's part of the what they would possibly be picking. Let's see if I can find one more. One more would be nice. Well, here's a couple of smaller ones. These a little bit bigger. And they can also give me a little bit of, you know, break up there. That's kind of nice. I like that. Um, but as they come into this grove, they will be attacked by wolves. And kind of when the battle is over, they will sense somebody who is kind of running away from them. Uh, so what I want is I kind of want these heads. Now this is like the same lichen stuff that's on some of these trees. And um, they make great bushes, like clumps of shrub. Also kind of impassable, but maybe they could, you know, really dig their way through it. And so I want some of these. I'm going to be using these. Um, sporadically too as I set up these encounters. So there. Uh, so the players are going to come in to this little grove. Uh, they'll probably be attacked by some wolves and then in fact let's, let's make a little backdrop over there instead of just having the cliff. Uh, I'm going to add this little tree just over here to give this a little more backdrop. Uh, and then after they're attacked by the wolves they will kind of hear something rustle in the in the bushes and kind of run away. And this is an NPC character. This is the person who's basically kind of, you know, maybe been involved with raiding the grove. And uh, maybe it'll be at the very end of the wolf battle or maybe in the middle of the wolf battle. That way the party can't just, you know, chase them down because the party has a monk who's like super fast. Um, but the party can't just like chase this person down. They'll have to maybe track him. Right, because I really want them to track him, and we'll see see how that works. Um, if it doesn't work and they actually catch him, that's okay too, because uh, the person is stealing life root in order to help a friend, and they would still have to go to where they need to go to get to the friend. Uh, so, kind of two options there as a DM. It's like if, if that way, if they're fast enough, and they well, they do send someone after, and they make a survival check to try track him, and they make a perception check to s spot them then they can catch this person um, and they'll kind of get a lot of the story up front or instead of kind of getting most of the story kind of in the end so as a DM be flexible so that's a little life life root grove okay so the next place is after they've kind of tracked or they, they've dealt with the life root grove they see that it's uh, you know it's being plucked and they have a possible suspect who just ran away uh, they will be able to track him and it won't be very hard because the person's not an expert pathfinder they're really just running through the forest so we're talking DC 10 and at this point you're really gambling on the fact that the uh, PCs can make a survival check at DC 10 between six of them you're hoping for that <laughs> if not they may have to do something go back to town get somebody to assist them but for the most part you know, probability as a DM is something that you also want to always kind of factor in. What is the probability of them, you know, somebody being able to at least roll a 10 on a survival check uh, to track somebody down? Should be pretty good. Um, so they're going to come to a little place where there are three houses. Um, and this uh, is kind of... This is a large part of this map. So we really only have kind of two main breakups in this area, but the three houses make up three different encounters. Um, so uh, we have some of my absolute favorite that Dwarven Forge has ever done is their um, house terrain. Love it, love it, love it. Uh, their little, I don't even remember what the pack was called. And I don't need many of them. It was just three houses, but we'll make one house a little bit bigger. Uh, some busted roofs. 
Um, but this is this is the house terrain. This is the house building blocks. Uh, so really cool stuff. Love it. And I have all the little building nodules and stuff that are that are necessary to build these little houses. Um, and I even have broken parts, which is even better. So you can really make the houses kind of dilapidated, uh, for lack of a better word. Right? So uh, let's see. Let me pan down here so you can see what I'm doing. There we go. Uh, so these little pegs, if you will, uh, four pegs, just kind of make up four corners. Kind of got to jam them in there. So we're just gonna have one little house. Actually, let's make this one. I kind of make this one a, a little, a little wider. Right, it's a little wide house. Uh, the key is, if you make any particular house like super stand out, uh, you kind of run the risk of the party just wanting to go straight for that house. Uh, and so that's always something to kind of be ready for. And so this set right here actually made um, some of these like burnt pieces and even some of them have pegs, right? So on this end, I'm going to use one kind of peg so it's kind of burnt. Like it's busted and let's see, I could use another one there if I wanted to. I could do that. Let's do that. And then, like these, these just slide. Let's see that up close. Uh, nice door and forwards. They just kind of slide in there like that. And they just sit. Oops, kind of hard to see. Sorry about that. They just kind of slide in, like little V shapes. Uh, there we go. So, very easy. Makes this house have kind of a dilapidated look. Uh, some of these are nice because you can use one of the regular pegs and just kind of use a sidewall and it just kind of free stands out of the way. <clears throat> um, but then you can also do things like you can do you can just lay in a second story right so I can just kind of lay that there and you know, this one oops I could lay that there right so the kind of the start of the one house. So it's one house. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and build another. Let's let's build some of these out. So I want a house that's a little bit bigger. So and they're all a bit dilapidated. It's a word for the day. Dilapidated. Uh, I'm gonna need some more floors. Get some more floors. And I'm definitely going to need some of these pegs. There we go. And we're going to need some walls. So just bringing the tools to the table. Uh, so there are double-sided pegs which are really kind of nice since these guys so they really kind of help hold these things together not that you really need to but they also kind of make if you wanted to do a split on the inside which we will we'll, we'll split this one here on the inside um, because you have some door options that you can do and they also have window options um, which you can do as well so for example on doors, even open and close, which is very cool. I'll just put a door in this one, and let's say along the back wall, let's just have maybe one of the wall ends. So this one just actually still has its uh, windows intact, right? So little shutters that kind of go on the windows, hold the windows intact. And go ahead and make this back wall, this back room here. Uh, solid. So this one house, 
a little solid on one side. Or maybe it has open shutters on, on the on one window, right? So some you know BC can crawl in. And we'll leave the door open so it's like dilapidated and we'll kind of burn that side there. And we'll leave this other side kind of broken open. So that's pretty cool. I like that. So that's two house, two little houses. Uh, actually, you know what? Let's let's make this one a little different. Change my mind at the last moment. We're gonna make this one an L house, and I'm gonna do this because I want to make this house. This isn't. This may not be. I haven't decided fully yet. This may not be the final house, but if it's like just one of the other houses and it looks bigger. Then you're kind of playing to the PCs. Oh, well, that house looks big. Let's go after that house. <laughs> so you kind of trick them. Uh, yes, that means I tricked you on purpose, PCs. I will not apologize. <laughs> Let's, uh, there we go. We'll shut off this kind of little last area back here. Only just. All right, so not, not very much. And there we go. We'll do this. We'll change the door to there. That's an interior door. Ah, there we go. We'll change that like that. Sometimes these don't line up perfect, and actually you see why. It's because I used a double piece here, and the double piece kind of puts the center. So in this case, I actually do need to just use a regular corner piece. That way it lines up with this guy just right. Now if I put two doubles here, that would work also. But this also lets me have a little, you know, I can move this guy around. Uh, and I can also use a piece like this on that side instead to kind of break that up. And that looks good. So, house number two. And maybe with house number two, uh, maybe the roof is still somewhat intact. So, at least on one part of it, we can do that. And then, so these roofs also have like little magnetic chimneys, which is kind of cool. I'm not saying anyone's home, but there we go. Have one burnt one, one that has a chimney. Put that, that there, just out of the way. And then let's build our third house. And our third house is, we are going to make this one two story. Uh, so the third house is actually kind of want this one to be the third house because it'll be the farthest away. So hopefully it's the last one they check. Uh, may not be, and that's okay. If it's not, then there's still the other two houses that can be checked out to make sure they're safe. In fact, our NPC, you know, he's worried because um, he's heard noises, you know, coming from outside on occasion uh, and thinks somebody's following him. And so he hopes, you know, he, if the party comes straight to this house, you know, they'll get a lot of information right up front, but they'll also kind of learn that um, the, uh, uh, this person uh, is hiding for a reason um, and trying to help someone who's basically in this world, fur bulgs are not commonly known, so fur bulgs are kind of scary to a lot of people. I know, and people are like, racist. Well, you know what? It's stuff like that happens, and you have to kind of, if you want some realism, you gotta kind of add a little to it, right? So, fur bulgs are a little bit scary, and um, his fur bulg friend is sick, and so he's got him out here hiding because he made a friend with a fur bulg, good for him. And we're gonna let's add some burn here just so that they don't think that this is like the perfect house, right? Um, and uh, I'll add a door in this inner part. That way they can safely lock themselves in. Uh, anyway, and so if they come and they come straight to this house and they find them, well, they're hiding and they've heard noises, so they'll send the party out and ask them to, you know, to look around because they think they've heard something. Um, well, the, the, the truth of the matter is, is there are indeed actually some gnolls that are looking for them, and uh, the gnolls will end up finding them at the end. 
Um, so we're going to add this second story here, and it's going to be small. I didn't want to add a big second story, but uh, the second story is also partially kind of dilapidated. Um, although I do want to make kind of like an attic or a storage area, if you will. So it's a little bu little busted, but it's a little... Let's see how I can do this. No, that's not going to work as well as I wanted it to. I uh, definitely need four corners. So we're just going to have the hole that they can climb through, climb up. Um, so it's kind of like an attic, and that's actually where they're hiding out because this is actually the safest spot in this little... Um, it's basically a village that was abandoned. Um, so... There we go. So anyway, the gnolls are basically tracking them down uh, because, you know, they're also interested in the life route, what's going on. Gnolls are also having some similar problems. Basically, the whole valley is having some sickness problems, as it turns out. And everybody's kind of scampering to figure out kind of what's going on. So, uh, ergo, kind of the, the panic and things are, creatures are moving around in the valley again. Uh, so since the whole premise of this is that the valley was kind of safe, um, the uh, you know you kind of have to have a reason why you know things are moving. In this one, we're not going to put a chimney on because it's an attic, but we'll put that on there, and we'll go ahead and just put that there. All right, cool. So in this one, we, you know, we have like two levels, right? So I always want to add a ladder, and I have a nice little box of ladders all sorts of different sizes but for this one just a very simple small small ladder will do you can just drop that right in there you can set it up against there kind of box it there we go and let's see now i can kind of look around and see if i want to add anything anywhere right so i can add something there um, i can add a little something there like maybe that was the door um, let's go ahead and close, I don't close that one off, let's, I can close that one off, no, let's close this one off, we'll say the door was on the end, could have been on one of the ends, main door, burn that away, that's pretty cool, got that kind of closed up, that's all kind of closed up, cool, I like it, it's not too complicated. This actually goes pretty fast uh, with building these little buildings. And in fact, this vent adventure setup, since it's not a heavily, uh, you know, like detailed dungeon, uh, setup for this one's going to be super quick, which is great. Never going to complain with it. super quick. So let's just put some of these away. Let's see. Let's get to the finer details, shall we? You're like, yeah, hurry up. Yeah, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. I'm one of those who always cleans behind themselves so you don't have a big mess later. Okay, so positioning. So they're going to come from there. And if I want, I can kind of use this whole space, just kind of as maybe chase, chase space to have them, you know, perhaps if they're rolling well, then they could chase, you know, the kid that direction, right? But I'm going to cover maybe this area over here. Um, so I want to position these houses you know, kind of central to this area. And I also don't want it to be perfect, meaning I'm going to put this one here at an angle, even though that kind of, most people are like, but that argues with the, you know, kind of creates tension with the, with the, with the board since you're on a square grid. I'm like, yeah, it does, but that's okay. You know, introducing a little bit of tension never hurt anything. It only helped. Right, so we'll have two houses here, and hopefully what they want to do is they want to check these two out before they make it to the third. I'll move the third up just a bit so it's not so obtrusive. Move my boxes and barrels back out of the way. Just kind of open that up back there. So lots of background. I'm going to use some of these small little 
trees to you know, add some breakup flavor. So let's open this up a little bit so you can kind of see more of the table and what I'm doing. That's cool. If I put this over here, yeah, you kind of see how the, the buildings are sitting. I'm also kind of wanting to give maybe a little something. Let's move things this direction just a tad, right? Talked about this before. Uh, the only thing is with this group that's playing, I have a remote player that doesn't usually show up. And they sit over here in this corner. But I have players over there, so I want players over there to have, have some action, right? So I do want to kind of move. Let's move one house that way a little bit. Uh, to have some action over there. And kind of the final house setup will be here. Let's move these around. So not much action back over here. But we can definitely do some eluding. I call it eluding whenever you kind of do something that makes them wonder a little bit, right? So I have some terrain, which um, it's like village kind of terrain, if you will. And where is a lot of it? It's like a little bird bath. Um, definitely going to need, like this one over, this building over here, I have a chimney. Turn the camera. So, I have a chimney, and this building over here has a chimney. So let's go ahead and put a fireplace in that side. So it matches the chimney. Little details, details, details. Uh, we also have some terrain like this. These are just stones, which basically can be ruins. It's like maybe there was a building that sat like way over here. Kind of look back. And I'm just putting some elusive ruins kind of back here in the corner to make it feel like you know, maybe there was something here. Um, I do have a ruin set. I'm not really going to break it out for this one, um, just because I don't want to be, I don't want to draw it away too much from what's going on. Um, but I do have like a cart, and I do have a well and some wood. So it's like I can take the little well, and like maybe the well is kind of at the center of town. So maybe there's a well. And I'll take some wood, and I'm just going to put some wood on the outside of this building here. And in fact, let's put the cart over here next to this building. So the cart is there. Put a little pile of wood here. There we go. Once again, some uh, just some illusion. Uh, now one of these buildings has uh, spiders and I have some webs so what I want to do now I don't want to give anything away right so we are going to make it this building over here so that the web is under it and inside so there as you can kind of see here pull my camera up a bit you can kind of see here, I'm taking this web. It's kind of a rubbery web. And I'm just kind of laying it in here in the back, right? And so with this roof on it, you cannot see it until you, they actually kind of go in there and leave the door a little partially opened. So when they lift the roof, because you know when play, players start to play, you just lift the roof off and you describe the room. Um, there will be a web in there. And Let's see. Now we kind of want to start reading through kind of the houses. So uh, we have one house that has the giant spider uh, in this one. Inside the house, let's see, we have, um, it looks like the remains of a bed and uh, some boxes. And there is a human-sized creature cocooned. All right, so let's get a couple of boxes. Actually, we have a bed. Let's see, where is... Where are the beds? I 
table here, and I'm going to use it. Uh, found a bed. So, got some of these. And bodies. Once again, and once again, these body tokens. Gotta love these body tokens. They're just so useful for having bodies, right? So, a body is going to be in the web, so we're going to put the body back in the corner. Put the web on it. Um, we will put a dilapidated box. Let's just put it over here next to the fireplace. Out here, just kind of busted furniture. Like maybe this was the front door. Uh, let's do it like that. So, how about one more little box? Or how about a barrel? I have a barrel. Love my barrels. Barrels are great. Just mess, break up terrain. So maybe this was the front door. And this is kind of the bedroom. The bed's dilapidated and whatnot. And this part of the house is still standing. Um, and if we want, we can even use, I still have another piece of broken wooden terrain. Let's go ahead and just use that. So if for no other reason other than to just, just give this some dimension, like maybe it was a second story and <clears throat> now it's kind of fallen. So we'll, we'll use that right there. So all in all, kind of gives that, gives that house kind of a nice look. Desolate, abandoned. Um, second house, we'll use the, this house over here. Uh, it's in worst, it is in the worst shape. Good, that one looks like it's in the worst shape. Uh, the wood is splintered and rotted all throughout. It's amazing, it still stands. Um, floorboards are rotted. And everything inside that once was is now splintered wood. Good. We really don't have to add a lot to this one. We just have some outside, uh, outside terrain, just kind of give some hints. So this one is, of course, our old Ankeg, who's going to kind of burst up, you know, from the floorboards and attack. Love it. Uh, and the third house. Uh, house is nearly empty, except for a few trash that remains. So we're not going to put anything in this main area of this third house so we'll kind of leave that leave that open um, a broken and toppled bookshelf lies oddly in the middle of the floor excellent let's see I have a broken and toppled bookshelf so let's just kind of lay that there great um, there are no books to be found because you know they're gonna ask they always ask uh, let's see and if they come through this door inside there is a half elf hunkered against the wall with a small candle uh, okay excellent uh, I do I have made this a second story so on the second story I am going to put I'm not going to put a bed even though it says bed I'm gonna put a bed roll so actually I have these little Little bitty bedrolls. They came in one of the, I think one of the WizKid packs, like a camping pack or something. Um, so I'm just gonna add, you can kinda see me through there. I'm gonna add this up here, right? And this is where our little fur bulb is going to be. And I need a half elf child. So, fur bulb can be any kind of creature, it doesn't really matter. Um, but I do have a child mini. I think they carry a water bucket. Remember correctly? Yep, I do. And let's see what can be a fur bowl. We'll just use a this little. I have a half orc. I know. He's an actor, so you know, don't 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 pick on the half orc actor. Right, so there's the fur bowl. Um, and the child will be kind of here on the second floor. It'll be on the first floor. So the kid's hiding in the corner. And let's see. Any other clues here? I'm going to get the wall, small candle, um, patches of dirt, water skin, remains of plants are spread about. Um, yeah, it's the remains of plants because basically they've been stealing, trying to steal the life root. Actually, let's go ahead and put them on the second floor. We're going to put them on the second floor. So, they had to come through there. So, through there, uh, why don't we have, we'll have the bed down there, and that's the dilapidated bed. So I'll make a dilapidated bed down here. And we're gonna add, of course, 
I'd add a barrel in a box. It's never complete without a barrel in a box. Right. So if you kind of look at the room, you kind of say I'm adding a barrel here. I'll put one in the corner. I'll put a little empty box at the foot of the bed. Just like that, right? So there's a door there. And then kind of once you got that, add them up here. And we'll go ahead and add another little, actually I think I have a broken barrel. Broken barrel would work really good. Uh, I do. Actually I have a couple broken barrels. I'm gonna spread these around. Uh, don't have a lot of them. But I have two of them. So these are broken barrels. A couple of broken barrels. I'll put a little broken barrel here next to next to the fur bulk who's sick. And I'll put a broken barrel. I'm gonna put a broken barrel up here on <laughs> on this one too. And in fact, let's go ahead and just put a let's put a box up here as well. There we go. Because you know that basically means they're gonna go up there and check because that's what PCs do. <laughs> There we go. Let's put the roof on here. Didn't really use the table. Don't need any other bodies. So I'll put those away. And don't need the table. I do have some rubble. And I can spread some of the rubble around. And I think that's a pretty good idea. Especially over here where uh, I'm kind of alluding to the fact that there may have been another building. So these are some rubble pieces. Pull this back here. <clears throat> you know, they may kind of come over here and, and check this out. And be like, yeah, there. it seems like there was something here. But yeah, it's gone now. There we go. Just some rubble. It kind of adds to the aesthetic of the whole, of the whole place. Um, and then of course the finale is, is once they've kind of secured this area, uh, the gnolls who basically kind of been tracking them, the gnolls are going to catch up to them. And when the gnolls catch up, basically the gnolls, and there's not a lot of them, but it's enough for the party to kind of worry about. Uh, the gnolls will catch up to them and they will basically have to fight the gnolls as the gnolls are trying to get what they think is life root, which the kid has basically been stealing. Uh, so that is what's going to happen there. Awesome. And that's it, really. I mean, it's this is this is pretty much a very direct, simple adventure. Um, there's going to basically, you know, a lot of it is transitional RP uh, that's going to take place. And in all, we have uh, one, two, three, four, and then the five, basically five encounters. Uh, and four of those encounters take place in the same day. So for all intent and purpose, uh, the party shouldn't really have to rest, even though. You know, they could if they wanted to. Especially in between, like, two houses. They could probably get a short rest in before the gnolls show up. Uh, so now comes the part of camouflaging, recovering uh, everything. So as always, um, I always start back to front whenever I cover. Uh, let's raise that up a bit so you can kind of see the whole table. Uh, so I will use one of my larger cloths and just kind of drop it in here. I'm going to use this one to basically cover the houses because once I reveal the houses, I mean, the, they can kind of see all of the houses. And I will just cover, cover that. Done. Nicely. Worked out great. Um, I will use this second cover and I will disappear off of that camera. Um, but I will move this camera around over here so you can kind of see as I cover this area. Second, let me see if I can fix this just a little bit because I don't want to take out the life root grove with that. I don't want them to see that. There we go. Very nice. Spread this out. Actually, I want to add a little, few more foliage bushes over here. Just a couple. 
And I didn't really add much to the other one because I don't think the other one really needs it. Although I could. I can kind of add some, if you're looking at me on the small camera, to the back over here. Just This is really just very peripheral um, terrain. You know, it, it's cosmetic. It's like it's meant to just, just kind of add to the table. Um, I think it helps with the ambience, if you will. And I'm going to add a few more in other places as well. I'm going to add, especially back over here, right? If this turns into a chase, you don't want some stuff to kind of break it up a little bit. So I'm going to put a bush here, put one way over here. I'm actually just going to kind of put one here because I have this big hole. You can't really see it, but I just want to cover that. So the main part here to cover is the life root grove and these really tall trees can be very tricky so I'm actually going to move this tall tree down here and put this smaller one here. Uh, when you lift these up they have a tendency to fall but, and that's okay you just stand them back up. Um, but yeah what I'm really trying to cover is the grove here that's 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 the main thing. They can kind of see some of the rest of this stuff. The rest of the stuff is fine. It can mean something to them. They can interpret. Um, but they can't really tell for sure. So I cover that. And of course, with this being covered for our crag encounter, let's so move the camera back a little bit more. For the crag encounter, obviously, the. Uh, you know, now I just need one piece to really kind of just cover the wagon train, uh, which I have. <clears throat> I got a blue piece right over here. Um, one thing I would always do is know your fabrics. Um, like my black fabric, <clears throat> both of these are opaque. They're not going to see through them at all. Um, it's just what I had. But I have come to find out that the that having this lighter sheet like fabric is just a lot easier to lay down and pick up um, and it interferes with less it's not as heavy then in this case for covering and fog of war lighter is lighter seems to be better um, or some people might prefer the weight and I know some trees have fallen down and that's fine there we go and See if I can cover that up there. Just cover up that last tree, even though I know it's completely leaning. It's fine. They'll get into this encounter right away, so I'm not worried too much about the mystery here. Um, it's just enough to kind of lead them. Like, what's going on? There could be a dungeon under there. It could be, you know, it could be forest terrain. At this point, my players kind of maybe know me a little bit, so I'm pretty sure they're going to guess correctly. They'll be like, oh, we're going to the forest. And that's okay. It's okay. A lot of this is about suspension of disbelief. So, there we go. That's it. Nice little easy forest encounter. Uh, let me move back over here. So, this has basically been root of the problem. As uh, you saw, I set it up. And, you know, like I said, it's like this is different. So, using the forest terrain, eBay, Etsy, great places to pick up cheap terrain. Uh, so go there if you're looking for those. And uh, once again, thanks for joining me on this. And I hope to see you somewhere on the screen. You guys have a good one.